According to a census by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, over 65 million Americans old and young have started backyard bird feeding. This means that backyard bird feeding is the second most popular hobby in the country. So, if this is such a popular hobby and so many people enjoy it, how did it begin and what are the pros and cons of you putting out your own feeders? This is what we're going to be discussing in this video from Bird Nerd. <laughs> Bird feeding dates all the way back to almost 3,500 years ago. The first mention of bird feeding is in Hindu writings from the Vedic era. These writings describe how Orthodox Hindus would take part in five great sacrifices to help reduce bad karma. One of the things they would do is leave out rations of food for birds as well as, quote, dogs, insects, wandering outcasts, and beings of the invisible worlds, end quote. The food generally put out was rice cakes. This is the longest form of bird feeding because this tradition is still practiced today. A monk in the 6th century is another early bird feeder. Once he even tamed a pigeon by feeding it. In 1845, Henry David Thoreau wrote about feeding the birds at Walden Pond. In Britain, in the winter of 1890, national newspapers asked individuals to leave out food for the birds. Then, in 1910, bird feeding was declared a national pastime. In 1926, the first commercial bird feeder for hummingbirds was made. In 1994, an Illinois congressman by the name of John Porter declared February National Bird Feeding Month. As of today, it is estimated that about one-third of the adult population takes part in backyard bird feeding. Every year, over $3 billion worth of bird seed is sold in the U.S. That's a lot of zeros. So, now that we've learned about the history, let's move on to the pros and cons of you putting up your own feeder. The first good thing about bird feeding is that it helps humans connect to nature. If you have a full feeder year-round, you can see birds in all seasons. Once you get started feeding birds and other critters, it's hard to stop. First, you learn about the different species. Then you start to identify individuals, and before long, you know all your regular visitors' songs and appearances. A problem that may occur at your feeders are larger birds or mammals preying on the birds you are attracting. Larger birds, such as the red-tailed hawk, may prey on small birds at your feeder. If they find success, they may perch near your feeder, and smaller birds will not visit. If this happens, don't get upset. You got a chance to see these marvelous birds up close. Although, if they continue this behavior, you're not allowed to harm them in any way as they are protected by law and they're just trying to get a meal as well. Simply take down your feeders for a couple of days and the raptor will look for a meal elsewhere. In the category of larger mammals, cats are a huge problem. Unlike the raptors, these hunters are not natural. Millions of songbirds are killed every year by outdoor house cats. To help resolve this problem, keep your cats indoors and scare away any cats you see hunting at your feeders. If simply scaring them away does not work, you can put out specific scents, like citrus, since cats are said not to like it. To help encourage the cat along, if they keep coming, you can use water as a repellent and spray them with a squirt bottle, and they will avoid your yard. Another pro is that you are helping the birds by feeding them. When food sources are scarce, especially in winter, birds find feeders where they can consume a snack and get more energy to go around their daily business. Birds spend most of their waking time in search of food, so having an extra source will help them greatly. Some people worry that birds may become reliant on feeders, but in truth, wild birds have many sources, so if you put a feeder or two out, it'll simply make their lives a little bit easier, but they won't become reliant on it. So if you ever need to take feeders away, it'll just make it a little harder for the birds for a few days, but they find new sources very quickly. While you are helping by giving them more energy and nutrition, you are also helping their population grow. Many regular feeder visitors' populations are rapidly growing and their ranges are expanding. But unfortunately, with more birds, there are also more diseases and other unfortunate things that may happen. If you attract many birds to one spot, it is easier for sick birds to pass a sickness on to other birds. To avoid this, if you see a sick bird, for example, a house finch with eye disease, just take down the feeder and thoroughly clean it. If the disease spreads to more birds, take down your feeder for a couple weeks to allow the sick birds to disperse. One last pro is that when people become interested in birds and put out feeders, they may join citizen science projects and provide valuable data. 
projects such as eBird, Project Feeder Watch, and the Great Backyard Bird Count are great places to start. By joining these sorts of projects, individuals contribute valuable data, which helps scientists trace migration paths, nesting success, and population changes. While there are both pros and cons, the beautiful birds and the burst of happiness you get from seeing each one is worth taking care of the feeders and any problems that may arise. Thank you everyone for joining me for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the history of bird feeding and the pros and cons of putting up your own feeders. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time on Bird Nerd. Thank you.